Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video and today we're reacting to some horror story type stuff. Three disturbing true home alone horror stories. People are stupid. I'm not gonna lie. People are trying to die. They're trying to die. Like, and I bet you we're about to see it again here. Ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax and enjoy. I got myself something to drink. You should go do the same. Let's get straight into it. So recently, I had an experience while I was at a friend's house alone watching his dog that inspired me to do another Home Alone themed video. I oh, spent so much time reading stories. Wait, do another video? So like, he's he's like a he's a content creator too. Stories of people's horrific experience. I had an experience while I was at a friend's house alone watching his dog that inspired me to do another Home Alone themed video. Okay. I spent so much time reading stories of people's horrific experiences that I forget these things could happen to me too. Mm -hmm. In a bit of a different fashion, I'll tell that experience I had after the viewer submitted stories at the end of the video. A more positive experience I would also like to talk about is my experience with Scentbird, a fragrance subscription Brother, service that allows you to choose new designer fragrances. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. Man, I, they're probably good, but let me skip this. Let, I'm skipping it. That's that's why like that's yeah. I'm I'm like, you know, if you want to promote your stuff, you got to pay me, bro. You got to pay me. The happy gang is trying to get paid, too. <laughs> we want to get paid, Growing too. Up, I was raised in rural Michigan. All right. There was hardly anything to do. If you like staring at trees and crops and lots of alone time, that was the place to be. That does not. That, hey, that can be pretty, pretty, pretty relaxing. I'm from the country countryside, too. So watch your mouth out of there as soon as I got a car and enough money to move. I'm not a nature hater or anything, but I'd pick being by a big city any day. Really? My parents don't own that property anymore. They sold it five years ago. But okay. to describe it, it was a three-acre property. The That's house a nice itself house. was pretty big, and there was a storage building out back. I was 13 when this happened. My parents would leave me alone often at this age. They trusted me because- I'm not gonna lie. Sorry, I'm gonna stop pausing it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But when I was like 13 and stuff, I was living at like my, I, I was, uh, I grew up at my grandparents' place. I was like, yeah, they raised me and they would leave me alone a lot too. And we we're living in a wooden house in a forest. If you follow me on Instagram, I don't know if it's here or there. It's probably here. I don't know. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen it. I was just in Denmark. That can get scary. That can get really scary. When this happened. Sorry for pausing it though. Happens. My parents would leave me alone often at this age. They trusted me because I matured at a young age and I had responsibilities on the property. I did. It was a weekend and I was playing Vice City on my PS2 in the living room. Oh when yeah. Suddenly, a loud metallic bang came from outside somewhere in the yard. I right away ran to every window I could to look outside to see if I could see something. And that that right there is why you're going to die. That's why you're going to die. So you say you hear something from the backyard and the first thing you do is run straight to the windows to look. Brother, I'm telling you, I'm talking. Hey, there's 100% going to be a dude or something standing right by the glass of the window, staring right back at you. And we can't do that. I cannot do that, bro. I'm talking about go to your room and hide, brother. What's happening? And I didn't oh, see anything until I got to the window looking out to the storage building out back. The door to it was completely open. Brother. I went immediately to grab the rifle from the closet and go outside. I made my presence known, shouting who's in there. Don't go no out. Avail. When I got to the door, I made it known I had a gun before looking inside. There was a bunch of stuff in there. From the I swear he should have just stayed inside with the gun. The sit down mug had a gun before looking inside. There was a bunch of stuff in there, from the sit down mower to the quad to infinite little lawn care items. Someone could have been hiding behind any of that stuff. Brother, no. Even as a kid, I didn't scare easily. But at that moment, I got really unsettled. And so I closed the door to the building and went back inside the house. I locked the door and then sat at the window. For See, what I'm thinking, right? And I'm sorry I'm posting it this much, but this is really what I'm thinking. I'm thinking while you were out there looking into the shed or whatever it is, somebody done got in the house and you're done now. You should have taken the rifle and you should have just waited by the door. You, just, you should have just sat somewhere waiting, brother. I'm talking about waiting for the rest of the night 
you put your mom or your dad like on speakerphone, put it on the table, you sit, you're ready, you tell them, mom, dad, I need y'all to come home. All right? I'm talking within the next 15 minutes, somebody could die. I need y'all to come home. That's like, brother, hey, but I really, I really got to go to the toilet. So, hey, bear with me. Give me one second. All right, there we go. See, this is the beauty of being a YouTuber. I can just pause it and we're right back in it. So let's go. For the longest time. Let's go back. But at that moment, I got really unsettled. And so I closed the door to the building and went back inside the house. I locked the door and then sat at the window for the longest time, watching the storage building, expecting the door to open at any second. Yeah. That door was heavy and impossible to just open by itself. It was simply a fact that someone came and opened it. Whether they were still inside of the building, I wasn't sure. I decided to go call my dad and ask his opinion. Oh, really? I went to the kitchen to the landline phone and called my dad's cell phone. He didn't pick up, so I left a voicemail. This was back when you'd still have to leave someone a voicemail because texting wasn't mainstream. After that, I went back to sitting next to the window, but now I put on a TV show in the background to make this less monotonous. I took the phone with me. I was probably about to give up when I heard creaks from upstairs. Nah, my heart man. was now in my throat. No, 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 no. See, this is exactly what I was just talking about. While you messed up by walking outside, even though you heard something that you still don't know what it is, you went outside to look at it. Brother, that was your first mistake. Don't ever leave the building. Don't ever leave the bed unless un unless somebody is in the building with you. Do not leave the building. Um, man, bro, you about to die. You're about to die. You're about to die. He done snuck in while you were out looking for him, bro. He played you. You played you. Uh. I had to ask myself the big question: Was I working myself up, or was someone here? Someone is I there, bro. I had a bro. serious guard dog mentality. Even if I didn't love that place, I saw it as mine, my family's. I had to protect it. No. But I was in over my head. I grabbed the rifle again and walked upstairs. No, you grab the rifle anything. and you leave. Calling out would only make a potential intruder know that I heard them. Yeah. I made it to the top of the stairs and I turned on the light for the upstairs hallway. There were five doors to open, all of them closed. Man, you're Four crazy. led to bedrooms, one led to the bathroom. Each door had a decently large crack underneath that would allow you to see under. The creak in the ceiling I heard moments earlier came from the side of the house my parents' bedroom was on. So I got down on my knees and looked under the crack of the door, and I saw two bare feet facing the other side of the door. I felt my stomach twist <sighs> no, into a knot. No, brother, you, hey, I know you're in America because you, you told us I am shooting, brother. <laughs> Birth. I don't care. Two and bare feet. Bro, at man, at least he had the decency to take off his shoes when he walked inside. Bro, ain't no way. Ain't no way. You're not hiding inside of my house if you have any good intentions. You know, like, y y you wouldn't do that. You have to, brother. I'm not telling you to shoot somebody. I am, actually. You should never harm anybody just for YouTube. Like, YouTube, don't worry. I'm not telling anybody to harm anybody. But somebody's trying to harm us. So, we got to, we, we got to save ourselves. Come on. Bare feet facing the other side of the door. Man. I felt my stomach twist into a knot. The reality of the situation just became so much more real. Oh, and my God. I realized God. I wasn't ready to threaten or, God forbid, shoot someone. I got up and quickly went downstairs, and I hid in the bathroom to call my dad. He still didn't pick up. Run out I of the house, another bro. voicemail, and then I called again and again. As I just said, hey, run out of the house. If somebody is in your house, you need to run, bro. Why can't I start it? There we he go. He never picked up. He must have had his phone set down somewhere. Man. I finally called 911, as I should have done right away. Yep. And I whispered into the phone the whole time, detailing exactly what was taking place. I was told to sit tight in the bathroom and not say a word. I heard footsteps coming down the stairs, and then they approached the bathroom door as if whoever it was somehow knew I went straight to the bathroom. The footsteps stopped outside the door, and there was a brief pause before a deep voice said, What's up, kid? 
I still remember the voice and those words so vividly. If I heard that voice today, Man. I'd still recognize it immediately. Bro, I'm talking panic, bro. I'm talking, I'm talking panic, bro. I'm talking straight up fear, bro. I'm talking anxiety, bro. I hope you got that rifle in there with you. He's talking to you, man. Lord, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God, Almighty Father, please protect me and everybody watching this. Please keep us safe. Amen. I almost wanted to cry. That's how scared I was. Man, I'm crying. I disobeyed what the operator told me and I spoke. I said loud and clear, I'm on the phone with the cops right now and I have a gun. I put the operator on speaker as she was asking me if everything's okay. The man attempted to open man, the door no, and when he realized oh. it was locked, I heard him walk away. I heard the footsteps fade to silence and then the sound of a door slamming. It was the sound of the back door. I'm sure I, I breathed a sigh of relief and from there on, I waited for the police to arrive. In the bedroom. When they did, I felt like a million pounds just lifted off my shoulders. After a thorough inspection of the house inside and out, confirming that the man was gone, they asked if there was anywhere else I could stay that night, and I said yes, my uncle's house. We contacted my uncle, who came and- Y'all better drive me there too, I ain't going there by myself. Hell no. Spoke with the police, then he took me back to his place. The thing right. that haunts me the most is that it was my fault. I could have prevented this. I left the door unlocked as I went to the storage building to investigate. Clearly, that's when the man simply walked right True. into the house. True. Even with a rifle in my hands, I didn't feel safe at all. It was truly the most horrific experience of my life. Bro. Okay, wait. So this was story one. We're getting straight into story two. But let's talk about this real quick. Because Happy Gang... By the way, if you're not a member of the Happy Gang, it's very, very easy. You just got to press that little, like, yellow square button down there in the corner. Yeah, right there. Then you're subscribed. It's never been easier. Let's talk about this because I don't want anything to happen to y'all. I know some of y'all out there are crazily stupid. I'm sorry. But, like, hey, if y'all are, like, if y'all are out there, just leaving the door open going outside you hear something outside and you go out to investigate man bro please come on now dog why would you do that why would you do that what on earth would make you do that if something like this happens let me tell you exactly what to do okay so i'm in here right now right now i'm in this like i'm in this house in the backyard i hear like a boom a freeze I panic, but I'm gonna stay where I'm at. Okay, so he said he had a gun. I'm gonna go get the gun. All right, I'm gonna go get the gun. Then I'm gonna bring the gun back. <laughs> okay, I got the gun now. I'm gonna sit somewhere barricaded. I'm gonna aim it at the door. I'm gonna like take my phone, dial 911, put it on speakerphone, put it next to me, let it ring, and just sit there and aim. Once the police comes on the phone and they're like, oh, the dispatcher. Hi, this is 911 emergency. How can I help you today? Man, oh boy, oh boy, somebody about to die. I need y'all to come right now because you're either going to save my life or his life. I need y'all to step on it. And then I'm going to stay right there until somebody show up. That's what you need to do. Don't do all that extra stuff. Come, come on, bro. Don't do all of that. All right, Kate. Talk to us, Kate. I was hey, and by the way, let me let me know what you guys would have done in these situations. Cause I'm alive because I'm a I'm a I'm a wuss, okay? I'm a wuss, but I'm still breathing. Let me know what you guys would have done. I was 18 when my parents went away on a week-long anniversary trip. Mm -hmm. My sister had already moved out by this point, so I had to hold the fort. My parents' property is enclosed by woods and a dirt driveway leading to the road. Of course. The road is a quiet back road with equally sized properties running alongside it. All of them separated a decent distance, so it's a really isolated feel up there. Okay. Everyone in town knows each other. You see familiar faces all the time for the most part. At the gas station, at the grocery store, at the bars, which I'd learn a few years later when I started going to them. 
Speaking of gas stations, this story starts one day while my parents were away. I was at a gas station filling up my tank. A right. black Jeep Cherokee pulled up to the pump next to mine. Drive by. A man with a gun. I swear to God, a man with a Is he about to say man with a gun? I swear to God, gas stations in America is one of the most dangerous places you can be for some my reason. My tank. When a black Jeep Cherokee pulled up to the pump next to mine, a man with a goatee stepped out, oh. greeted me, and started filling his tank. In that town, it was normal for strangers to greet each other like that. All right. He had his nozzle locked into the gas tank, and then he walked around to my side of the pump and went, Excuse me, do you know how to get to the interstate from here? I helped him to the best of my ability. He pulled out a notepad and started writing down the directions I gave him. Very odd how he wouldn't just do that on his cell phone like anyone else would. He thanked Old me school. and asked if I'm from the area. I said, yeah, I grew up here, and he said he's from out of town. He didn't specify where. He then went back to his side and put the knob. I see. So this would give me creepy vibes. It could just be some dude like wanting to be nice, asking for directions, and he doesn't want it to be awkward. So he's just like kind of talking while doing it. Nothing wrong with that. I would still be like, dude, hey, I'm going to help you, but I don't really know you like that. You know, that's just like, I don't really know you like that, you know? So like, I, so far, it's not like a red flag. It's like a yellow flag. I was all back in the pump. He then asked my name. As nah. he said, it's nice meeting you. Nope. I said, my name's Kate. Nah, he said, what see, a lovely that's your name. First mistake. And then got in his car as I got into mine. I drove out first and turned left to go up the road back home. It was only a few minutes worth of driving before I was approaching our turn into the driveway. I slowed down and put my blinker on, then turned right onto the property. All right. It was at that moment that I noticed the car behind me was that same black Jeep Cherokee. Oh yeah, see, nah, <laughs> see. This just went from a yellow flag to not even a red flag to a, like every single, like every color flag. This is a every colored flag. Okay, this is a whole flag, okay? This is a flag that could have been representing a nation with all of these colors. Okay? You need to... So, you know, you're driving right. I know it looks like left for y'all, but this is actually right because it's mirrored. You're driving right. You see him. You need to... Go straight and you just continue driving as if you did like a wrong turn. This is exactly what you need to do. Again, take your phone, call the cops. Put it on speakerphone. Don't let him see that you have the phone. So you're just driving. He's following you because he's thinking, I, I'm going to follow her home. So you just act like everything's good. You get on the phone. You say, hey, yo, police, I'm about to kill everybody on this road if y'all don't come help me. Okay? That's exactly what you need to do. He passed me as I turned into our driveway. He went the complete opposite way that I told him to go to get to the interstate. Yeah, nah. As he passed me, he didn't slow down or anything, so it seemed that maybe he just forgot the directions I gave him and went no, the wrong way. he wrote them down. I let myself inside and went about the rest of my day doing whatever. I think it was that night that I was going out to meet up with my friends that I stepped outside and walked to my car and heard the sound of footsteps nearby. Brother! Like I said, the house is enclosed by woods, and this was in the middle of the summertime. It could have you been any not. number of animals. No, 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 no. I'm from the rural as well as as well. Listen, you can hear a difference, okay? A deer's foot is like this big. A human foot is like this big, okay? You can hear a difference. I'm telling you, nope. Go back in your house. You should have never went to your home. That's what I said. You, so yeah, I didn't investigate. Done. I just got in my car and left. Thank but when God. When I got back home hours later and walked from my car to the house, a man's voice from out somewhere in the woods Brother. called out Kate. I got the chills as I looked around and then in a panic rushed to open the front door. I slammed it shut and sat on the couch to breathe. Call the the neighbors all knew my name, but the houses are not on top of each other, so it's a bit of a walk. And there was no reason for one of them to call my name like that, like a creep, and not identify call themselves. the cops! I decided to call my parents to tell them, and their explanation was it must have been one of the neighbors. No. Nah. will probably knock on the door. I didn't tell them about the encounter at the gas station. The next day, which was a Saturday, I stayed home most of the day, and later that night, I once again was going out to meet with my friends. After getting ready and everything, 
I went outside, and as I was walking to my car, I heard loud and clear from the not so far distance, someone call Kate again. Yeah, nah, this is too much. See, at this point, like, you should have already done something the first time. Because, listen, ain't nobody just randomly finna call your name in, in the f***ing woods, okay? Come on now. Don't be that stupid. You know damn well that's not gonna happen. Alright? So, you should have done something already back then. A second time is crazy. A second time is crazy. I'm talking, don't even call the police. Find the direct line for the SWAT team, okay? I need the military on my front porch ASAP. Man. This time, I didn't wait a second. I ran back inside the house and locked the door again. Yep. I called 911 this time. Yep. Texting my family while doing so. Yep. After two cops showed up to the house, they looked around the perimeter of the property with Found their flashlights, nothing. then came back and said to call again if this persisted. Nah, you I didn't day. feel much better after this. It's not really like they did much. I refrained from going outside until the next day when I had work. I'm moving. I was a server at a nearby restaurant. I was working a late shift. I left the house in broad daylight, paranoid to hear that voice again. Thankfully, though, I didn't. Maybe seeing the police car finally scared them off. After many hours at work, I was ready to go home and collapse into bed. I pulled onto the property, parked my car out front, and walked to the front door. I stopped when I heard the sound of footsteps again. It didn't sound like an animal's footsteps, though. No, I stood you on the front the deck for a second, waiting. And then, that familiar voice yelled out again, saying, Kate, don't call the cops on me again, cutie. Man, bro, on oh God, you better back the f*** up, because I'm about to, bro, I'm about to annihilate this entire forest. You calling me cutie is crazy. You calling me by my first name is crazy. Listen, bro, I don't know where you are. I don't know where you're at, but I swear, I swear to God, I'm going to kill you, bro. I'm going to kill you. I'm a man. Man, don't let me, don't, man. Man, bro, you need to, man, you need to move. You need to, and I'm talking to you, Kate. You need to move. You can't live here no more. You should have never went into your, like, oh, you should have never taken a right. You should have just kept going. You all need to listen to me. I yelled out, you need help. You're sick. And let myself inside. I called the cops once more. The cops came again, searched the perimeter again, and left. Brother! My parents told me I should stay at a friend's house for the night. What I about, couldn't agree more. What about maybe, you know, just, I'm just throwing it out there. What about maybe coming home? What about maybe coming home? Hmm? No? Maybe? Y'all should, y'all should, y'all should come home. Or They would be back the following night, so after that, I would feel much safer being there. My friend Alex told me I could stay with her that night, so I packed a bag and was ready to go. I'm not going outside. I checked alone. out the windows first to make sure the coast was clear. Nope, Alex, I you're then coming went outside to pick me up. Locked the door as fast as I could, then ran to the car. As I turned the key in the ignition, I heard something right to my left. Brother, come and tell me he's in the car. Come and tell me he's in the car, or even worse, maybe no worse. But my worst fear is like, you know, sorry that I'm pausing it this much, but I'm scared and y'all like these scary things. You're gonna, you're gonna have to deal with me, okay? Listen, my biggest like fear, you know in horror movies how the ghost always comes like slowly towards you? That's creepy and all, don't get me wrong. I would perish. I would just dissolve into like dust. But imagine if it's the opposite way. If, if you like, you turn your head and something is just rushing at you, hauling ass. Brother, the sound I would make, the sound that would come out of my body would have been a sound that I didn't even know I could make. An undiscovered sound would leave my body, okay? So if she's about to look to her left and something is running towards her, I'm turning into the car, okay? I'm just, I'm not there anymore. I'm a part of the car now. I might be a car door. Like, bruh, no. Clear. I then went outside and locked the door as fast as I could, then ran to the car. As I turned the key in the ignition, I heard something right to my left. Right outside the driver's side door was a man wearing a face mask trying to open the door. Bruh. I couldn't even scream. I felt like I was choking on air. As I put the car in drive, he started hitting the glass with his elbow. I looped my car around on the grass and sped down the driveway 
and I turned right up the road and didn't stop until I got to Alex's house. I was hysterically crying the whole drive there as I had Alex and her dad on the phone with me. He said he would have come and picked me up had he known the situation. We called Thank the police you. together for a third time in total. A couple officers went to my parents' house to investigate again, make sure no windows were shattered or anything. One officer came to Alex's house where I once again gave my description of what happened. This was probably the most action these cops had seen in a long time in this quiet town. Thankfully, my parents came home the next day, oh, and I felt safe staying at home again. Finally! I fully believe the man at the gas station followed me home intentionally and scoped the place out, realizing I was by myself, mm -hmm. and for whatever reason toyed with me, until he actually tried to pounce and get me. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have given my real name, and I should mm -hmm. have been more alert to my surroundings and realized he was following me in my- You should have never ever went home when you saw him following you. That's what you should have not done. Car that day. Some people are nuts and have way too much time on their hands. This incident was a huge motivating factor in my moving out to my own apartment a few months later. Oh yeah. Story three, by bread. I right, listen. You know we gotta go through it. We gotta talk about it. But I've, I've I've pretty much been saying what needs to be said. Okay. One. Like I don't know why I said one there. Um, the, the thing where it all started was they met up at the gas station, all right? He needed directions. That's all good. That's all good. Someone needs directions. I want someone to help me, okay? I'm not known in America. I will want somebody to help me. Now, the fact that he started like small talk and while her, like while she was giving him directions, it's not too bad. It's not too weird where it like when he asked for your name hell no you're not getting my name all right i don't know you like that that's not happening now i would also say him saying i know maybe y'all in america y'all do this more than here but someone looking at me being like that's a lovely name already instantly i would get the creep be like man what the fuck man what what you said what man bro you better wash your mouth talking about that's a lovely name i don't know you but where everything went to shite was on the way home when you realize this dude is following you and you're taking a right remember this is actually right i know it looks left for y'all but it's not taking a right you see him in the rear view you go back on the road and you call the police that's what you should have done and yeah that's 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 what you should have done all right now let me go fill this up don't worry it won't even take a second for y'all because i can pause it because i'm a youtuber it's awesome you should go do the same pause the video right here refill your drink and i'll see you in a second all right we are gucci ladies and gentlemen i done filled this up let's have a ah very nice very nice very nice Let's get straight in to the video. Story number three by Brad Andy. Talk to us, Brad. I was home alone one night for a reason I don't remember. All mm -hmm. I remember is my entire family was gone. That's a nice I was setup. 15 or 16 years old. I was a big gamer at the time. I was obsessed with StarCraft and admittedly, I'd sometimes spend a weekend night or two playing StarCraft or some other PC game. This okay. was right before COVID lockdown started. I was playing StarCraft on my computer in my bedroom on the first floor. All That's right. when the doorbell rang, twice. I hurried no, to the door, no, not no, wanting no, to- No, 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 wait, 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 see. This, it, it depends. If it's broad daylight, fair enough, go check. I swear to you, I have like a, a certain time at night. If it's like, if it's later than this time, you're not going to be able to reach me, okay? It's just not happening. So this depends. Is it late? Is it not late? Let me know what you think. Like, is the, let me know what you would have done. Does it, does it matter at what time of the day or night it is? Like, if someone rings your doorbell, doorbell, door, doorbell or knocks on your door, are you just going to open the door no matter what? Let me know in the comments. I need to hear y'all's opinion as well. Opinion. Be away from the game for too long in fear of losing. Right. I got to the front door and said, who is it? As I always would if I was alone. A soft and weak voice on the other side said something that I couldn't hear. Nah. It sounded like a woman. 
I opened the door, with the storm door still separating me and this older woman standing on the other side, no. with a big smile on her face. Bruh, hell no! No, wait, wait, one thing is that you're there, the next thing is that you're old, I'm so sorry, but it makes it creepy. The third thing is that you're a woman, I'm so sorry, but it makes it creepy. Now the fourth thing, I don't want to swear too much, is you two. You're standing there like this? Brother, ain't no way in, mm -mm. ain't no way in hell you're coming in, nope, uh-uh. She had her hands behind her back. No. I said through the door, can I help you? She said she needed to use a phone and asked if she could come inside. <laughs> not mine. Ever since I was a little kid, I was always taught not to let a stranger into the house ever. Yep. That included women. Everybody. I felt so awkward though, I didn't know how to turn her away. I redirected her to the library a few blocks down because yep. they'd surely have a phone. Deep down, I knew the library was closed at this point, but Doesn't I was just matter. trying to get the stranger who was trying to get into my house to leave. She was still smiling, but what she said next did not match her smile. She said, that's very rude to turn away an old lady asking for help. I well, replied if you the only way I could think to, pores, that bro. was that my parents don't allow strangers into the house. It's a house rule. I slowly started closing the door as I was saying sorry, and she just stood there, not moving, but still smiling at me. And though her smile never changed, it suddenly felt much more menacing. I was walking back to my room when the doorbell rang again. No, 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 no. See, at this point, you're calling the police. I don't know why it takes you all so long to call the police, okay? Oh, yeah, but no, I don't want to, like, snitch on them. Man, shut the, man, shut the fuck up. What is you talking about? You want to die? And I'm not talking like people like this. We're not talking about you're going to get shot or something. People like this? That's on some horror movie type shit, bro. Like, bro, call 911. Done. Don't, there's nothing more to talk about. Just get it done. There was no way in hell I was opening the door again. Nope. That woman radiated weird vibes from the start. Yup. Maybe something was wrong with her. Maybe she wasn't all there. Maybe. These were things I had no way of knowing. And maybe that was selfish of me to send her on her way. But I just wasn't hell opening the door no. for anyone when I was home alone. I went back to my game. Not too long after I sat back down, I heard something tapping on the window. Bro, 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 bro. This right here is exactly what you're gonna do. This right here is exactly what you're about to do. Look, you're gonna go in here, you're gonna go in here, then you're gonna press 9, 1, one this is what you're gonna do don't mind my screen okay just don't don't mind my screen that's what you're gonna do then you're gonna press call nothing else don't look out the window don't don't look out the metal. window the window was directly in front of my desk don't i had the blind pulled down so i couldn't see what was making the noise don't but i already check. had an idea my don't. room was the only room with a light on in the house the don't horrible do thought that it was the old woman from just before and that she walked over to my window terrified me. Bro, of course it is. I turned off the sound on my computer. At this point, I didn't care about my game anymore. <laughs> the clinking sound on the window persisted. Bro, call I the basically police. basically said, F this. Don't check. left to a different room in the house. I sat in the darkness of the living room for a bit when the doorbell rang again. This woman was harassing me now. Why are you not calling the police, bro? Why are you not calling the police? Come on, man. I tried to convince myself she wasn't a threat. Just some crazy old woman who was probably clueless as to where she is. She could be a demon. When she rang the doorbell a second and third time. I decided to go open the door and ask her if there's someone I could call for her. What? But when I opened the door, there was now a man on the other side. He looked to be about 10 years younger than her. He said through the storm door, have you seen my mother? I replied saying yes, she came to my door just before. Nah. He then apologized to me and said she has dementia and got out of the house. I, can't, I, I'm, I suddenly I, felt man. bad, but he had- No, 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 it's a trick, it's a trick, it's a trick. I'm sorry, bro, I'm so sorry. I'm, uh, I don't wanna say I'm a bad person. I just, I don't wanna die, man. I don't want to die. And not like this. I don't wanna die. I, I haven't s just leave man just just not the kid 
but whoever's in front of the door, just go, bro. Just ask me eh. if he could come in for a minute. No, I hate Again, I no. felt awkward. Why did he need to come inside? Man, what the? I said the same thing that I told to the woman who we claimed to be his mother. I said we could just talk through this door. I then no, said that I think she went into my backyard because I heard something at my window. I told him he could go around back and check. No. Nah. He thanked me and walked down the walkway, and I thought he went into the backyard. Where but is the police? When I went to the back and looked out the back window, expecting to see him searching around, I saw nobody, not him or his mom. This was all too weird for me. I went to bed on the earlier side that night, just falling asleep with the TV on in the background, until I heard the clinking sound on the window again. Something metal was tapping on the... Oh, no, there's too much to talk about here. Like, bro, you, you want to die. Obviously, this dude is getting a rush out of this. This dude is getting a rush out of this. I don't know if he likes stuff like this or whatever is going on. But the fact that the police have not been called yet after numerous, numerous. What do I say after numerous? Attempts to get your attention, to get in the house, whatever. Bro, the fact that you have not called the police is absolutely straight up first class grade a crazy glass uh, i remembered the concerned man and i decided to try and help not nah, call the, the window, police lifted the blind up with my hand and i saw that woman outside my window crazy. with that same creepy smile she was tapping a kitchen knife on my window i closed nah. the blind and crawled back into my bed this didn't feel like it was actually happening a suspiciously short amount of time later, the doorbell rang like four times. The clinking on the window stopped by this point. This was all too suspicious. It felt like some kind of robbery attempt. I ignored the doorbell. I stayed in my bed. Bro, this is far worse than robbery, man. They would have left you alone a long time ago and went to another house if this was a robbery attempt. This is something straight up crazy. Like you for not calling the police. What the cluck is wrong with you? I was gonna wait this out. I didn't have a cell phone at this time. I wasn't the most social guy growing up. Meh. I also didn't want to call the police for some reason. I waited this all out until it finally stopped. The next morning, I told my dad what happened when I called him. He told me I was smart not to open the door. Smart, bro, I'm... Even the shit on you when I come home for not calling the police, you... Supposed to call the goddamn police. Are you crazy? And we moving too. And we moving. Yeah. Man. Everyone agreed that everything about it sounded like an attempted robbery. Nope. Is there a chance that maybe that woman really did have dementia and that the man was really her concerned son? Nope. Maybe. But nope. it all seemed too coordinated. Why did he want to come into the house too? No. Nope. How did he even know she came to my house specifically? Why didn't he ever go into the backyard to look for her when I gave no. him permission to do so? Too many unanswered questions that lead me to believe I avoided something terrible happening if I opened that door. So as I mentioned at the start of the video, a week ago as I'm recording this, something happened to me personally that inspired me to revisit this theme. So my friend Cody asked me to watch his dog Theo for the night. Yeah. Theo's a little pomsky and he barks a lot. So, when he started barking like crazy at something going on outside, I didn't pay any attention to it besides telling him to be quiet a few times. Bro, oh, I'm not kidding you. That scared the shit out of me. That do that sound effect from the, like, for the, like, dork, do dork, dog scared the shit out of me. I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding. But when he went to the back door and kept barking, I figured he wanted to go outside. So I was going to the back door to open it, but as I got close to the door, I realized someone was trying to open the door from the outside. And then I saw through the screen of the door, there was another guy looking right back at me. This was in the backyard, which was already alarming enough. And he wasn't someone I recognized to be a family member of Cody's. So I asked him who he is, and he responded asking me if I'd seen Melissa. Melissa is Cody's younger sister who's in her 20s. Meanwhile, this guy looked like he was in his mid 50s and homeless. So I told him he needs to leave. There's no Melissa who lives here. And he said, you sure? So I said, yeah, Man, you need to leave. There's bro. cameras all over the property. I don't told you. He left you. right after that. Getting him to leave was easy. But when Cody asked his sister who that guy could have been, she said she had no idea. The guy looked like he was 55, drunk and filthy. Not exactly someone Cody's 20-something-year-old sister would be associating with. 
The fact that he went to the back door and tried letting himself in was actually pretty terrifying because oh, you can really? only imagine what he was trying to do to Melissa. And it's why so many of these stories could be avoided by just keeping your doors locked. Or, hear me out, by calling 911 when, when stuff happens. Happy Gang, thank you so much for watching this. As I said earlier, if you're not a part of the Happy Gang yet, all you need to do is click that yellow square down there. If it's not there for some reason, sometimes it doesn't appear. I don't know why. Then all you got to do is just like this. Watch me. You go here. You double tap this. And boom, it's right there. On Actually, let's subscribe to let's subscribe to uh, Mr. Nightmare. He's, he's a good content creator. I enjoy these things. Even though they scare the absolute freaking dog shit out of me. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope you got yourself something to drink because I'm not kidding when I say, hey, drink with me when we do this. I'm trying to chill with you guys, okay? But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope you're happy. I hope you're safe. Please stay safe and please call 911 when stuff like this happens. Don't die on me, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.